It is so good to get out into nature, leave the city behind, but that always brings up one major concern, and that is where are we gonna get our coffee? Without the convenience of running water, electrical outlets, and flat countertops, is it still possible to make a great brew? I believe it is. And to show you, I wanna walk you through, or maybe more accurately, hike you through the entire range of Wakako brewers. But we'll have to leave those fancy home brew bars back where they belong, at home, and let's find some higher ground. Wakako makes a whole range of coffee brewing gear from espresso to filter and they're all hand powered. So I thought what better place to kind of give you a sense of how they work than out here in the forest, a bit of an urban hike here in Barcelona, whether they might be a good fit for, for your next adventure or maybe you have a coffee loving friend, this is a great gift idea. So let's open some of these up. We are out in the wild, so we'll need some external source of heat. I picked this, uh, this burner up at a local outdoors equipment hiking kind of store. And then this I picked up, nice handy uh, kettle to heat our water. And then the water itself. So I could have just bought uh, a fresh bottle from, from the grocery store, but I decided to refill with filtered water back home. That's why I'm using this really huge reused plastic bottle. As you can see, it's very crinkly, but I think that just makes it a little bit more sustainable here. So let's just pour that in. While this water boils over here, uh, another thing that I wanted to mention is that I am actually a Wakako ambassador. And so what that means is, you know, I've worked with them on several different projects over the years. I use all of this gear. I like it a lot, but keep that in mind. Some of the links down in the description will be affiliate links. So if that doesn't bother you, go ahead, click away. Um, but also if you happen to own one of these Wakako brewers and you're not an ambassador and you want to leave a comment down in uh, below the video, that would really help some other people out as well to get a bit of perspective on your experience with them. But I want to show you my as honest of an opinion as I can. So let's get into the mini presso. They started back in 2013. Uh, the owner wanted to make an espresso brewer that anyone could take with them wherever they go, hand powered. And so I actually got introduced to Wakako through one of my first collaborations was biking across Spain. I biked from, from Barcelona all the way to the west coast in Galicia and I took this Mini Presso GR with me on my travels. So you could say I'm pretty intimate with this on a, on a range of different uh, settings and experiences, but let's just break it down. Got a little scoop in here, which will come in handy in a second. In this case, we're gonna use the scoop as a bit of a tamper, give it a light tamp, and then put the nozzle right on top. Screw that on, and then our water here. Put that on the base. It's a little bit easier with two hands, of course. And then once all of our water is through, flip it over, and we are ready to go. Hmm. A few pros and cons. Uh, well, pros, let's start with that. Uh, the Mini Presso, it is very light. It's very compact, quite small, and I believe it's basically the cheapest uh, brewer on the lineup. So it goes for around 5490 USD. And yeah, you can bring it anywhere with you. The cons, I find that, you know, it was their first brewer. Uh, they, they, they improved on a lot of the technology, different pump uh, technology there, some of the materials. And so for me, I noticed that the water does tend to cool down as it moves through all of that plastic. So if you wanna preheat a bunch of times, that can improve uh, the water brewing temperature. Um, but of course, when you're out in the wild, you know, it's a little bit harder to do. But as you can see, I've got a really nice espresso here. I do like this brewer. I think it works great for the purposes. Let's shoot this back and check out the Nano Presso. The Nano Presso. And as you can see, I've got the, the barista kit extension here. So this one requires a little bit more explanation. If you take that off, you've got this ring, okay? And the nozzle actually pops out so it's a little bit you know easier to take apart and to clean the basket with the barista extension i basically always use the barista extension because i like having this 12 gram basket and then we've got the water tank here similar to the to the mini presso and the cup is actually on the outside of the water tank so let me explain the barista kit really quick and why i like to use it so basically remember that uh that scoop that we used as a tamper, well now it has its own dedicated tamper here and you can fit in all these different sized baskets here. So this is the original 
eight gram basket, but I really like to load up on a bit more coffee here. So you can also use this as a bigger tank and a bigger cup. But let's make a brew. We can even go a little bit finer on the grind here. So I like to go around 16, two notches more. And this is also where I tend to start measuring the dose because I want exactly 12 grams in here. So we'll use the exagram, pop that in. Pop it in here again, using the fingers as a bit of a funnel. And then we'll use our little tamper, pop it on the nozzle, just as we did before. Can't forget about the little barista kit extension. That's why this is here, this ring, so that we can actually fit this extra sized basket onto the Nanopresso water. Nice and hot. And I actually like that the cup is over the tank this time. Makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna pop that on here again as well. And since we put 12 grams in, let's shoot for around 24 mils. Super nice crema on there. Push that in and there we go. Nice little crema. We call it like a, a pressurized nozzle so it gives it a little bit more crema here. Also, also allowing us to grind a bit finer with the sort of slightly upgraded uh, pump technology in the Nanopresso. Again, I love the, uh, the double espresso adapter and I love the flavor coming out of here. So just a little bit more rich, a little bit more sweet. The price range, $69.90 USD plus the Barista Kit, $32.90. So those two together, it's a great combination. And one last thing that I wanted to, to mention here because we do have tucked away in our Octorama is the extension for Nespresso capsules. It is pretty straightforward, but you do have to change out the nozzle here um, by putting it through this, this Nespresso capsule ring. And then you will have to put on our new nozzle here, click that into place, and then you're ready to, uh, to make a brew with a Nespresso capsule. I'm not gonna show you right here. I'll show you at the very end with the Mini Presso NS2 because it's basically the same, same technology, same construction. You get the idea, capsule in here. But let's, let's jump forward a little bit because I wanna stay in the espresso range and let's explore the Pico Presso. So let's just break it down here. We've got the little sort of tab on the bottom. There is a scoop here which you can use to, to scoop coffee but I always weigh my coffee so I'm not gonna use this today. We've got the, the basket. This is a 52 millimeter basket, but you can replace it with other 52 millimeter baskets if you have uh, a style that you like better. Porta filter, and then this is the, the shower screen. So this always goes right on top here after we put our coffee in. We've got the tamper and the dosing ring. So I will show you how that works. And then of course, our cute little WDT tool. So let's get right into it. With the Pico Presso, again, I'm very particular with grind size. So I'm gonna reset this to zero and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, 12, 13. That's usually a really good starting place for espresso coffee. And then I will weigh out exactly 18 grams. So here's an even closer view of my workflow here, just to give you a sense pop the dosing ring on and then get our handy tamper and then the shower screen goes right on top again you could preheat your pico presso and then for the extraction itself i'm actually going to grab the cup from the nano presso because the pico presso doesn't come with its own cup so you could see that as a pro or a con the pro is that it's so small, it's so short, but of course you have to bring one with you. So let's tear that up. I put 18 grams in and often I will actually do a little bit of a pre-infusion as well. So all of the water is kind of sitting with the puck here. Um, I might wait for around eight to 10 seconds. You can wait longer if you'd like, of course. This Pico Presso really allows you to 
dial in an espresso. You can see it dripping through now. So I'm gonna continue putting that through. It's great for people who want to explore espresso brewing um, without buying big fancy equipment that needs plumbing or that takes up too much counter space or takes too much money out of your bank account. It costs $129.90 USD. I find that a really good price range to get espresso anywhere from the home to out here in the park or camping or even on an airplane. I brewed this to 40 milliliters in the cup, just over a one to two ratio. And uh, yeah, I wanna give you a sense of what to expect. Mm. So yeah, even more sweeter still, it has just a lot more complexity there in the way that we've, we've brewed it up. You know, nice amount of crema. Of course, it doesn't have the pressurized nozzle that the Nano Presso does have and the Mini Presso. You're gonna really have to make sure that your grind size is on point, not too coarse, not too fine, or else it will clog up. And then uh, also using fresh coffee, grinding it on the spot. So it's, it does require more finesse. And if you want a full breakdown of how to use the Pico Presso and specifically how it compares to the Nano Presso, I made another video much more in depth. So feel free to click the link right up here after you finish watching this video and you can see a little bit of the, the breakdown. I'm gonna get over caffeinated here, mm. but it's just so good. Let's move on to some of the filter brewers. So this is the Cup of Mocha. It, uh, it's got a few little pieces in here, which I'll describe, but it is the pour over, the filter brewer uh, of the mix. Let me just give you a quick rundown. This is just a lid and what's nice is it actually turns this brewer into the Octaroma. You can actually switch these in and out depending on your purposes. So let's take that off, put this on, and as you can see it locks, locks into place. That's ready to go and we'll want to measure out our coffee as well. I find that this brewer works best with around 15 grams of more coarsely ground coffee than of course our espresso. So the cup of mocha does actually come with this small little one cup pour over filter. So we'll just pop that on here and you'll want to give that uh, a rinse as well before we get going. So let's take our water. You might not want to use just a regular kettle to, to, to do your, your pour over brewing. And so this is, this is where the Octorama really comes in handy. Let's pour our hot water in here, close that up, and then using the little nozzle here, hit tear, and we're ready to, to pour. So you can just pour this over like this, and it's a nice, somewhat e even flow. Obviously not ideal if you wanna bring your pouring kettle gooseneck, you can do that, but today we're out here and this is, in my opinion, the best way to, to administer the water if you have the octorum, but if not, just pour the water over top, it'll be fine. This handy little piece will go right here. We'll twist this off and put it down for the remaining drips. So there we go, filter brew. I love a nice filter. It's soothing, it's warm, and brings out different types of flavors, different types of complexity in your brew compared to espresso. Mm. Oh yeah, that's very good. In terms of price, this one goes for $34.90 USD, so it's very affordable. It's uh, one of the cheaper of the entire lineup. Of course, it's more straightforward. There's less parts and that kind of thing, but uh, yeah, a cup of mocha. So some of, the, some of the pros, you can take it anywhere with you and it converts right into your travel mug. So as I mentioned, it's exact same as the Octoroma um, and you can bring that with you. It keeps, keeps your coffee hot, which is nice. The cons is that it doesn't brew that much coffee. So it's only brewing around 15 grams, which for most people, that's actually quite enough. So let's put that to the side. Uh, I'm gonna finish drinking that later. Still a lot of coffee to work through. And let's move on to our last filter brewer. This is the Pipa Mocha. It's a vacuum extracting coffee. Let's get into it. All right, so the Pipa Mocha, let's just break it down. This is the lid. This is another dosing funnel type thing. And this is the basket. So the coffee goes in here. The filter is kind of on both sides, but different types of filters. And then this completely 
<laughs> comes out. So this, uh, this is gonna be our brewing mechanism. It's really unique. I've never seen anything quite like it, but we need to pop this in. Fill this with water, fill this with ground coffee, and I'll show you the rest. So for this one, I like to go a little bit finer than what we had it before. We were at 24, so six, around 18 clicks. Now, I will be honest, and some of you might not like this, but I actually don't tend to use the, the scale with this one either. And that, I think, to me, in some ways, translates to also another pro for this machine, is that you're able to kind of measure and dose everything out right here in the brewer itself. I might see that, okay, there's a little bit too much coffee in here, so I might pour that back into the grinder because I just want to make sure that it's nice and flat, doesn't need to be compacted or anything for the filter to go right on top. Make sure that there's no grounds in between the filter and the, the basket. And then we'll need to pop it in. So what I'll do is I'll actually just fill it up to this line right here. There's a few different lines, but I like this ratio. It's kind of the most amount of water. I'm making a filter brew, so I want it to be a little bit more liquidy here. And that's another reason why you don't really need a scale. Just pop that out on and it floats down. I love that visual, very meditative, watching the bubbles kind of come up. So now it's just a little bit of a waiting game because we wanna make sure that there's basically no more bubbles coming out of here and that all of the coffee in the basket is soaked with all of our hot water. Then we'll just pop this right back on and start twisting. Now, as you can see, this twisting motion is moving the lid or the inner chamber up. So it's actually extracting, moving this way uh, up through the water and we'll be left with the coffee at the end. And you do want to sort of twist it a little fairly slow and steady because if you go too fast, it will not be able to grab the coffee and it will just start twisting the whole entire unit. So this process to some may be seen as a con because it just takes a little bit more time, right? You're twisting the whole entire time as opposed to the pour over, you know, you're kind of just pouring, waiting. The espresso, yeah, you're pumping the whole entire time, but because it's espresso, it takes a little bit uh, shorter of a time. And then you'll also want to check in here, make sure that the the negative pressure is actually sucking the water down through the coffee. So if you've either ground too fine or put too much coffee in, or you've gone too quick, you will see a little bit of the water sitting on top. And so, yeah, that's just a, just, just practice. It's just trial and error. Um, you might want to grind a little bit coarser in that case. The first time I actually got to brew with this Pipa Mocha was, I was traveling in Thailand and this was a, was a great companion uh, for that trip actually, because I could just throw it in my bag, didn't have to bring a scale, fit basically anywhere, and I could also use it as a travel mug. So I got to brew coffee with it on a Thai coffee farm. So that was very interesting. Never had Thai coffee before that trip. Today we've got some Colombian coffee, also very nice. Mmm. Oh yeah. So I really like the, the body and the texture that comes out of the Pipa Mocha. This is a little bit thicker than maybe a filter, you know, the cup of mocha, for example, or any sort of pour over where you're using a paper filter, but it's not gritty and grainy and oily like, for example, a French press, which would use uh, a metal filter in that case. Because the, the filtration and, and the, the type of material that they use, it's just it's very, very fine. And so it produces sort of a bit more body, some nice juiciness uh, without the, the grittiness that comes typically with a, a metal filter. And then you can use this lid to also turn this into a travel brewer. I will say from personal experience, I do prefer this lid. I find that it actually keeps the water in even more or the coffee in as you, as you can see here, you know, from a bit of use and it's, like I said, I've traveled around the world with it. Maybe the, the seal could uh, use a bit, of, <laughs> uh, a bit of a replacement, but you know, if you're just in the car or something and, and you have this upright, 
then that works fine. We're down to our last brewer here. Let's move on. Something very portable, very new, the Mini Presso NS2. To really get into the Mini Presso NS2 here, we've got the last little bit of water boiling up and we'll have to go back and find the little travel case. Of course, this doesn't come with it. You can, you can use it without, but in here, I keep the, all the capsules. So let's bring it over to the Mini Presso and make up a really quick and easy brew. All right, so one thing I love about this, this little brewer is first of all, how compact it is. It's, it's insane. This is the smallest brewer in the entire lineup, at least the most skinny. Of course, the Pico Presso is more short, um, but this includes the cup. So it's really beautiful design. This is actually made from 30% um, organic materials, wheat, that kind of thing. We've got this little tray stand. And then this is a nice little touch as well. This is the mat. We can put the cup right on here and then it just makes it really nice for us to, to make a brew. Which one are we gonna use? This Ethiopia seems okay. You can use plastic capsules, you can use aluminum ones, but you can't use the reusable. Uh, I've had a few people ask me, can I, can I use my little reusable stainless steel capsules? But in this, no. I would just recommend, you know, if you're gonna go through all that effort of grinding it up, put, putting it in, tamping it in, just use the regular Nano Presso or, or Mini Presso or Pico Presso um, to get uh, a much better brew with your own coffee. So put that in here. Let's screw the, uh, the nozzle back on. If you want a little bit more in-depth uh, review or, or details there, click the video right up here. Um, but let me just show you how it compares. The Nano Presso, Mini Presso, you actually had to flip it over because the tank was external. Now the tank, the water tank is in with the pump. So let's uh, add some water. Pop the lid on. Nice slow pump, does the trick. Right into the cup here. And then once you're done, and you're ready to sip away. Nice crema on the top. Mm, that's actually not too bad. Depending on the coffee you're using, of course, it will change the, you know, if you can get a nice specialty coffee roaster in your capsules, that's ideal. But, you know, here I'm just using sort of basic capsules just to show you what it's all about. But yeah, it's actually uh, not bad. Mm. Super compact. This goes for $59.90 USD. And then the travel case, which you can add on, is $32.90 USD. So, you know, it's a nice companion, but it's not absolutely necessary for brewing with the Mini Presso NS2. For a bit of pros and cons, um, you, of course, one of the cons maybe is that you can only use capsules, whereas the Nano Presso, you can switch out with the adapter whether you want to use uh, the basket or if you want to use capsules. So, you know, but this one really is, is for the casual capsule user. Let's say, you know, I might take this if I know that I'm going on a flight, I want some coffee that I can at least control a little bit of the variables. I want an espresso. A lot of flights don't have espresso on it. Some more of the pros, you know, it's super easy to use. Pop the capsule in, pop the hot water in, and you're drinking literally within seconds. So there we have it, the entire Wakako gear range. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. If you liked this video, you found it helpful, maybe you got a deeper understanding of the Wakako gear, definitely leave this, this video a quick like, and I would love to see you around here again. So please subscribe and I will catch you in the next video.